Bismillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah My dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah In this beautiful pep talk I want to tell you the story of two people That I've had the privilege to know personally and work with The first one's name is Selena A Chinese girl And the second is Mark An Englishman They both were my students French classes so they took French with me I taught them French when I met them when I put this ad here when I met them uh, they didn't speak nothing and their level of French is absolutely nil so we started I started seeing them twice a week both paid 25 pounds for two hours ie 12 pounds 50 an hour I saw them twice a week and uh, the whole journey went for six months the reason why Selena wanted to learn French is because she wanted to travel and she wanted just to add an extra language to her Chinese and English and she wanted French. Mark was planning on buying a house in France with his wife and go live there in vacation and probably move there. And they wanted, when I met him, that they would buy the house in six months' time and it would be totally awesome if he could have few words under his belt to communicate with people in France. I said, no big deal, I'll, I'll help you. And uh, so I took from them the vow and the covenant that they would attend twice a week, no absence, and they would do what I tell them to do and they would get good right results. We shook hands, well, not with the lady, but uh, we agreed and that's that. Six months later, and uh, 600 pounds later for each, they both were able to converse in French, read French, write French, and Mark was so over the moon that he started traveling regularly to France to put in practice his French. Selena was over the moon, she never thought she had reached the stage that she did in French. Both of them at the end gave me a gift of 100 pounds extra because they saw that the results yielded. One thing that I also said that the way, the, de the design of the course and how I worked with them and everything was absolutely fantastic because they took some, they tried before to take French but it didn't just work for them. Alhamdulillah. Now they speak French and they, they, I gave them a few books and their French is far better than they once started six months ago. That is them, so they started this. Now the comparison that is really staggering is someone claims and says, I am working hard to get into Jannah, to please Allah, to enjoy Islam, yet they failed to learn the language of Islam, Arabic. Today, I see a lot of problems with translations. And you've been in my group for some time and you can see the difference between what you're learning today and what you've been learning your entire life. Insane. Selena and Mark spent 600 pounds to learn. And now, they are so ever grateful they did. And now from time to time I speak to them and I now converse with them in French. Sure, I don't go fast, but I talk to them in a good speed and they do answer. Sometimes they make mistakes, sure, but they can hold a conversation. Six months ago when I met them, they couldn't string two words together. My question to you is what are you waiting for? You claim you want Jannah, you want to claim that Islam is your religion. How beautiful the Qur'an is, the words of Allah. And you've been a Muslim for so long, you can't even string two words apart. Insha'Allah, Masha'Allah, Salam Alaikum. Is, that, is, that, is this all that you can conjure up? My brothers and my sisters, there is an island a lot of people spend their time in. That island is called excusitis. Excusitis, like arthritis. Except excusitis is for the people who give too much excuses as to why they cannot 
learn Arabic. Why a lot of people have enough excuses in their safe as to why they shouldn't or they can't do what they're supposed to do. I don't have time. Too much. I'm busy. I'm working hard. I've got so many engagement. I'm this and I'm that. And I swear to Allah, if I get to work with you as your coach for free, I will find that through eight hours, you're busy for one hour, and the rest of the day is you are turning around, chasing your tail. Why did Selena and Mark spend 600 pounds, six months, twice a week, two hours a week with homework, learn to speak French? What's stopping you from learning Arabic? Until when you are going to say, I remember Allah, when you mean I make dhikr of Allah, when you know that is mentioning the name of Allah, not remembering Allah. Until when are you going to stay God's will instead of insha'Allah? Until when you can't pray the night prayers because you don't understand Arabic because it's in uh, Quran because it's in Arabic? Until when you can't string two words in Arabic, Alhamdulillah, and you don't even know the meaning of it? Until when? Is 600 pounds too much for your Jannah? Is 6,000 pounds too much for your Jannah? Look at this beautiful hadith reported in Al-Hakim and also in Al-Bayhaqi. And the Shaykh Al-Albani said it's a good hadith. Al-Imam Al-Hakim in Al-Mustadrak said the chain of narrator is authentic. Meaning this hadith with another hadith of the same meaning will be authentic. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Iyaka wa ma yu'atadharu minha. Iyaka. Be careful. Be careful. Wa ma yu'atadharu minha. Be careful of what you will give excuses for. What this hadith means, my brothers and my sisters. Make sure you don't do something where you have to apologize after you've done it. I.e., you give an appointment to somebody and you don't turn in time and then you spend the next half an hour apologizing to them why you are late. You could have just come on time and saved yourself for the hassle. Look at Islam, beautiful. Time management. We teach people to be 10 to 15 minutes before the appointment is due. Why? to avoid this very particular hadith, i.e. watch out from making excuses. This is what the meaning of the hadith, i.e. be sharp. My brothers and my girls, my question to you is, what when you die tomorrow and you go back to Allah with a disabled Islam? I read yesterday in, in this group, somebody asking what, a good copy of the Quran in English. And I said to myself, Subhanallah, what would people tell Allah on the day of Qiyamah? Or when you go to your grave, that I learned the Quran in English? And Allah tells you, I explicitly said Quran is Arabic. What excuse will you give him? What excuse will you give yourself to convince yourself you've done the best what it is for you to what's the best to you? Some of you don't even know how to read Arabic and you've been Muslim for what? Years upon years. Tons of you don't even know 10 ahadith in Arabic. All of you now rely on English. You know, one of the things that spreads sexual diseases, the HIV and AIDS and all these things, you know what the problem with that? Is there are people called carriers. They fornicate, they get the virus, but it does not affect them. This is how Allah wants it. But that go, they go and sleep with somebody else and they give them the virus and the other person dies, subhanAllah. Many Muslims today, do carry a virus. I call it as, as detrimental, as, as, as a killer as the HIV and AIDS. Do you know what that virus is? 
is they are part of so many WhatsApp groups and they keep copying and pasting between groups in English. They just listen to somebody. They post, this person posts something in that group and I see it and I like it, so I take it and post it in so many groups that I belong to. You know what happens? It's a virus. It kills more than AIDS. Things that Allah has not revealed. Ibn Taymiyyah says, the other day, Ibn Taymiyyah says, Ali rahmatullah, at the end of his life, he said, I wish I had written books on tafsir of Quran. Like Ibn Kathir and Qurtubi and Tabrani, like that. Someone translated it wrongly, but Ibn Taymiyyah said, I wish I had read more of the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah memorized the Quran when he was less than seven. At the end of his life, in the last year, when he died, he read the Qur'an 87 times. But to you and to me and to whoever had that saying there, we would think the great Ibn Taymiyyah wish he had read the Qur'an more often. That means he didn't read the Qur'an. And it is widely spread between groups. And every time one of these people copy-paste into another group, and the other group copy pastes, he gets the sins for lying and for being one of the active carriers of the HIV Islam disease. My brothers and my sisters, don't spend your time in the island called Excusitis. You don't want to be in that island. You don't want to be in the island of excuses. Please, for the love of Allah, get out of town. That is not the island for you please for the love of Allah learn Arabic your Islam is sick is disabled it requires special needs your Islam you can't even recite Al-Fatiha properly you can't recite the Quran properly you hardly know a hadith and you only live, all you who believe, remember me. Ya Allah, give me the strength to remember you. Who are you to forget Allah? What's wrong with you? I am so upset with the people that have been Muslims for years. And they have not taken like Selena and Mark. Six months, twice a week. 600 pounds, that's how much they spent. 600 pounds. And now they speak French. You tell me you're dumb, you can't learn Arabic? You're smarter than that. You're smarter than that. So my brothers and my sisters, today's pep talk is a little bit rough and tough and I mean it because I'd rather want to hurt you here today and you get really mad at yourself rather than walking into the grave, as I said, that you find from Allah that which you didn't expect and suddenly you wish you had learned Arabic. You wish you could go back to world to hear and learn Arabic, but it's too late. Heed my call. Heed my call. Learn Arabic. Get in touch. I will teach you Arabic. I've tried before to do it for free, but free to the Muslim people is an insult. Not to them, but to me. I've been let down when I want to teach people Arabic for free. They don't turn up. They're full of excusitis. They live in this disease island. So my brothers, I, my sisters, get in touch. You need Arabic. You need Arabic. You need Arabic. Islam today is exactly what the Jews and the Christians have done to their religion. The Islam in English, let me tell you for what I see so far, is more than 75% of what Islam doesn't want you to do. Don't rely on the Prophet says, oh you who believe, do this and don't do that. That is English. Get back to the roots. Be safe. Then sorry. I will leave you with these thoughts. And I will see how many of you will take the challenge. Six months to learn Arabic. And who is going to be the loser who will spend his time or her time in the Excusitis Island? I pray to Allah that you are not one of these. You have a wonderful day full of remorses, full of regret. 
and full of kicking your butt that you need to wake up and do something about it. And I pray to Allah that you will sit in front of me one day on this table so that you can get on your journey to six months and you will start reading the Quran and being far better than you ever been. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa, telephone number 078 76 40 Or you can email me at Eljadis E L dot J A L W E S at Gmail dot com. Come learn Arabic. You deserve it and Islam deserves to be known in Arabic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.